What's up, everybody? Welcome to the What's on Disney Plus podcast. On this episode, we're going to be doing as our feature topic is Disney Plus a Netflix killer, and also we'll be talking briefly about some of the um, other news from the past week. So, before we do that, um, just do a bit of quick housekeeping. If you haven't already done so, remember make sure you subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to the audio version, and if you can share it, let other people know about it. It'll be great. Um, like us on facebook and twitter at this precise minute obviously the website we are still building um but the more you guys can share it the better it'll be and if you've got any questions let us know in um comments or get in touch so first off james so we're going to just quickly just run through um some of the quick news the big one really was apparently disney are working on a sister act sequel or reboot which really caught me off guard i wasn't expecting that in the slightest to be honest, I didn't even realize this was a property they had. Um, but yeah, that was a surprise. That came out of nowhere. It's like Sister Act. I haven't even thought of Sister Act since I was, I don't know, 15 or 16, mm. whenever the second one came out. Um, I do have fond memories of Sister yeah. Act. It's uh, particularly the first one. The second one was kind of less so. But I don't, even, I don't even remember the second one. That was how much. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't really tell you what happened in the second one. I know the first one ends with her singing for the Pope, so, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, this came out of nowhere, but has potential. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it certainly could work. So Yeah, I think they're looking at a re... I think this is going to be more like a reboot than a... This is where Disney... I think Disney are looking at, like, Disney Plus of, like, doing these kind of movies of maybe this wouldn't work on the big screen of people going to see it but it would work as a small budget movie um, that will work for Disney Plus. It's cheaper to make, etc. But there, are, I think I think we're going to see a lot of stuff coming through that are franchises that we maybe aren't. I think they're going to get away. F- I think at the minute Disney Plus has still kind of got this Disney v- zone to it. I mean, there are many movies and many franchises that are on the table and being that are going to be on this platform that maybe a lot of people aren't expecting. I think it's going to be a little bit more wider range than people are thinking at this precise minute. And Sister Act, I, that one came out of nowhere. Again, I forgot. This is the thing with all these touchstone pictures. I even went back and actually had a look, see what movies that they actually released because I kind of touched on when I was a kid, you didn't associate with Disney as a brand, but there were tons of movies that they brought out at the time. And Sister Act was a big deal when it came out. They even turned it into a musical. Maybe they'll just do the musical or do something different. I don't know. Either way, there are a lot of properties that they can touch on, and it's good to see them digging into the back catalog rather than just kind of mining the same stuff over and over again. Although you could argue this is kind of mining the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. But... But this is the advantage that the Disney Plus platform gives them. You know, you don't need to sell this movie on its own merits. Mm. You know, uh, you don't have to go, well, we've got to make sure that Sister Act 3 does well enough at the box office that it justifies putting it in. No, we've, we've already got the subscribers. This is just another thing for people to be like, oh, okay, yeah, it's uh, a lazy Saturday night. What can we put on for the kids that'll be kind of inoffensive and we might enjoy as well? Well, Sister Act 3. There's a, It's not something that would sell the service, but at being part of the service yeah. could definitely generate some uh, some viewership. So, yeah. and, and this is the type of thing that we can see. Netflix has been doing it for years. Amazon Prime has been doing it for years. And it's good to see Disney kind of going, yeah, you know, these properties... It wouldn't make sense to put them out in, in as a new TV series or a new movie, but yeah, it, it basically costs nothing here for us to do it other than production costs, so throw it out there. I think the thing is, well, Disney kind of got away from, especially in the last five, ten years, getting away from releasing small movies. It has all been about epic movies right. marvel you know they started realizing these smaller movies they could make a bit of money on them but they weren't making the kind of money that something else could make and go into cinema and i think with fox searchlight and disney plus it's kind of going to allow them the chance of kind of getting back into that because there's so many movies that they released that weren't under the disney brand which i think is going to kind of kick into it but obviously at the minute very early stages don't really know too much more about it there's something else this weekend um apparently hillary duff was at an event and she kind of said she's in talks with disney over bringing back um lizzie mcguire um obviously don't quite know 
is very, very, very much in the early stages. So we could see maybe a resurgence of that, which I instantly thought, hmm, you're looking at, this was about 2000, 2003, the last kind of things. Ooh, all of those people that watched it when they were kids are now in their mid-20s. What a perfect way of trying to do a bit of nostalgia to get people to sign up. Yeah, and I mean, this has actually been fairly popular way of doing things in the last couple of years. We've had Roseanne be rebooted. Well, not rebooted, but you know, yeah. picked up again, and then there was that whole kerfuffle yeah. over it, but they continued doing the show. They, they renamed it to The Connors or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Boy Meets World got the, the Girl Meets World sequel, yeah. you know. That's uh, a Raven. Uh, That's a Raven, yeah. Full House over on Netflix became mm. Fuller House. Uh, so it certainly makes sense for for Disney to go back and say, hey, we had a lot of popular shows uh, when from, you know, the I guess it would be the generation just slightly after mm -hmm. ours. We might as well bring them back in, especially since a lot of these actors and actresses aren't really doing anything. Most no. of the Disney uh, child actors went on to do other things, but they could certainly be brought back in. Mm -hmm. And again, just like with Sister Act, this is the perfect platform to do it. It's low risk. They don't have to, to worry about the feasibility of the series. They can just kind of produce a season and see how it does and and go from there. So mm. it it's not a show for me, obviously, but it there is an audience for this show, and this is the exact place that they should be doing this kind of thing. Yeah. I think as well as I do think it kind of came out very strong about Marvel. And, I think the Marvel and the Star Wars shows grab more attention. I mean, for example, Sebastian Stan was down in Brazil this weekend and kind of made a joke about this new series of being a bit like Miami Vice with the two of them. But he very much, was very coy, didn't really say much about it. But that's been, they've been grabbing all the attention where I think the Disney side of things like Sister Act and Lizzie McGuire and things like that, this is what they need to get to a different audience. And apparently there's already quite a big um audience already kind of there was a survey that came out and about 25 percent of people that they asked were aware of disney plus or would even subscribe to it especially in the younger categories kind of the, the teenagers the tweenies or the 20s and the 30s the older people got the less like they were i think because you know the older people get that they look at disney in a different way than maybe younger people do we look at it much more as a, a brand with lots of different things that we like, whereas I think older people tend to just look at it as Mickey Mouse. So they didn't really surprise me in terms of that. But there's a lot of interest already, and we still could maybe be eight, nine months away from release yet. Yeah, and I think this builds into the same thing we talked about last time, which is, you know, they lead, uh, they being Disney, lead with The Mandalorian. They mm -hmm. lead with uh the cassian show winter soldier falcon vision and the scarlet witch and these are the things that make us and, and our generation go "Ooh, this is kind of interesting and then once you're already into the ecosystem you go oh hey lizzie mcguire i remember that growing up let's see how this is going on right now different that kind of thing. and also targets a completely different audience if they can get that going yeah well. and, and that's the other part of it too where we can go you and I, we're subscribing to it for the Star Wars shows, for the Marvel shows, maybe for a couple other, you know, mm. movies that we have nostalgia for. And then, you know, uh, younger cousins come over. We can throw on the shows that would appeal to them. Nieces, nephews, sons, daughters. They can be watching the shows that are age appropriate to them. So they're targeting us, the people who are going to be paying for it, mm. with these big blockbuster shows. But at the same time, they're going, we got the rest of this. The, mm. the family has what whatever you want you know you want that family night we got some sister act you want some old-time classics maybe we've got uh you know homeward bound something like that yeah. on the show well i mean this and last week they released the trailer for um kid possible the new live action movie it's coming to disney channel in february so yeah it's going to be on the system but these are the kind of things which as it incorporates with the disney channel will get people in Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'd actually forgotten about it. I did see you posted that one, but I was on vacation, so I didn't watch yeah. it. Also, I didn't really grow up with Kim Possible, but no. I do at least recognize the franchise, and I recognize that it's got uh, some pulling power. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's just another yeah. thing there. It's Sorry, good go as ahead. well for kids to have um, TV movies, to have these kind of, you know, to have different kind of content. I, you know, it doesn't always have to be the big epics, but looking good. I mean, a lot, it was a little bit more busier on kind of a few bits pieces than I was expecting. I was expecting a little bit of a lull for a few weeks while um, kind of things settled down. But let's jump into the topic of the show, which is a title that's got brought up way back since it ever got announced. Was 
is Disney Plus a Netflix killer? And you might be considering that, no. And, but I kind of want to go into the idea of why personally there is a big problem for me going forward with Netflix because first off, they are going to be removing a lot of content from Netflix to move it over to Disney Plus. They've also got to have this big problem with the Marvel shows because I will be honest, I only subscribe to Netflix to watch the Marvel shows. That was the only reason I got it. And once this next run of Marvel movies goes, um, I don't think there's enough there at the minute to really keep me going because all their original stuff that they're doing is not grabbing my attention very well. I've watched a few of the movies like the new Kurt Russell one and the, the last kingdom, I think it was, but a lot of the TV shows I'm not being drawn in and they are um, really jumping into this. Uh, that's a different topic. But for me personally, um, and it's like the same thing with Amazon of, I can only subscribe to so many and how, what am I getting? And losing the Marvel shows is going to be a big thing for why I'm, I personally might keep it going for my wife because she's loving the, the Sabrina show at the minute. But for me, I probably wouldn't carry on. And see, I'm going from the opposite angle. I will continue to do Netflix because they do have enough shows going on that I do enjoy uh, either uh, the ones that are picked up from syndication, such as The Last Kingdom, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. I did enjoy that series. Not as much as Vikings, but it is a good little kind of like side show on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like The Dragon Prince, which was by the Avatar Last Airbender creators. Uh, Altered Carbon was really good. They, they've been doing a number of movies that I like. There is enough at Netflix for myself to continue spending the money month to month to, to, to keep the, the thing going, even with the Marvel properties going on. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, you know, they've got their archive of uh, television shows and movies that they rotate in and out and so forth. But it really is going to be a personal decision. And it's going to depend on what you're in Netflix for. If you are in Netflix for Daredevil and Iron Fist and, and all these shows, which have now been canceled, uh, then, yeah, there's no reason to stick with it. If, however, you're in, if you're hanging out in Netflix for stranger things and uh you know how to train your dragon stuff like that that yeah you're gonna stick with it yeah for me i think the big problem at the minute is like with netflix is that a lot of people have joined netflix with the idea that it was the cable killer it was the thing of you didn't need to have this big expensive cable thing you could spend ten dollars a month and have everything in this all you can eat and gradually over time and I think people are getting very aware of the fact that it's not just Disney pulling it back. And there's a lot of like feedback from Netflix. People going, why are you taking it away? Stop taking it away. We want everything on there in the same price. But Warner are doing the same thing. I mean, they just signed a massive deal to keep friends on there for like another year. Um, once Warner start pulling the things off and all these companies, and that's why Netflix is have, uh, investing so much in original content is because what you thought of as Netflix as this, big pile of shows and on demand and movies a lot of that is going to be missing in a bit and if i don't think of disney plus as a netflix killer i think of it as they just hit it with like five or six paper cuts but you get enough paper cuts you could bleed to death that's the difference it's like disney plus on its own is not going to make a big impact but if you start having CBS, HBO Now, and you know Warner's one, and maybe Sony launch one, and Comcast launch one, and Amazon, you know, they're all cutting into what was Netflix's main business model, and it is going to affect it. Yeah, I mean that's absolutely the case. I, when you get down to it, to answer the clickbait title, no, Disney Plus is not a Netflix killer. It might kill it for specific people, like we were talking about, like mm. you. But it's not going to take a huge dent out of the people, uh, out of the Netflix subscriber base. But uh, if Warner Brothers starts using the DC Universe uh, system and puts more than just DC properties onto it, they start putting other Warner Brother properties onto it. Well, it, it is. They're that, planning on doing all their movies, right. all their TV shows. Um, they're going to have a tiered system. But all of that is all going to be is all. Be, they've signed some short term deals. They're not going down. Disney are taking the more approach of once the deal has expired, we want it off, and we want to keep everything back for Disney Plus. Warner kind of turned around and was like, "Yeah, we're not launching to the end of the year, and you're going to give us a million dollars for non exclusive rights for a year. Yeah, you can have the money. Give us the money." Um, there was a little bit. Disney are taking a hit now 
rather than to gain it back. Whereas Warner Brothers are being like, yeah, we'll take the money now, but we'll take it off when we launch it. Right. And then the more companies that do this either way with the exclusive uh, pullback or a non-exclusive agreement that they mm-hmm. keep with Netflix, the more companies that do this, the worse Netflix's position will be. Will Netflix ever be truly like eliminated from the space? Well, yeah, every company will eventually be eliminated. That's but on a long enough timeline we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Are we talking like five to ten years? Probably not. Uh, especially if they can sit, continue to just be like, we're producing our own content. You want Stranger Things? You got to be on Netflix. You want Altered Carbon? You got to be on Netflix. You know, and they'll add new titles to that, and they'll pull old titles that aren't being uh, being watched. But yeah, I mean. None of these, even combined, will kill Netflix. None of these, even combined, will kill Amazon Prime. Um, and then the Warner Brothers service isn't going to kill Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus isn't going to kill the CBS service and so on. But they are going to all pillage uh, subscribers from each other. Mm. And so you're going to see less subscribers per service than you would if they were more consolidated. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is, I think the days of Netflix being the all-in-one um, buffet are going. They are being, you know, the plates are being removed and they're making the kitchen smaller. No, they are investing heavily in original content because they know, they knew this was coming. They have planned for this because they knew that they had something good, but they knew that they were so dependent on licensing that this wasn't going to carry on. Um, I mean, I talk about, like, like I said, about cancelling Netflix of, like, you know, you guys have got like Hulu and we don't have that here yet, but once that goes and if they move all the ABC and the Fox stuff off of Now TV, for example, I would cancel Now TV because they all I really watch on there are the Fox and the ABC shows. So this is the thing of where it's like everything is changing and Netflix is going through a massive shuffle and it's in the middle of that thing and I think Warner and Disney are really kind of making it very much aware to the general public that things on Netflix are changing and people are reacting, um, you know, very much to that because they don't like Netflix changing. Netflix has been the cheap alternative to cable for so long. And then suddenly it's not, beca- it's not becoming that anymore. And people are saying, I don't want to subscribe to all these platforms. And I don't guess I should have just kept cable cable television as we knew it, what is going to change anyway, because we don't like sitting down at eight o'clock and watching a show and nine o'clock, that's what streaming also changed it changed our habits. Yeah, and we're never going to change back to that. And the cable companies are completely aware of it. They, they all of them, are working on ways to continue to exist as companies in this um, not quite yet post-television world, but a, a world we're getting towards. Now, again, I'm talking about on a long enough timeline. Mm-hmm. Television isn't going anywhere for a while. But the subscriber base will continue to dwindle, as especially as millennials move more and more to these other services. Mm-hmm. You know, the older generation, they, they, they want their nightly news. They want their, you know, well, turn to Channel 17 to get the Red Sox game kind of thing, mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, let's sit down and binge Stranger Things tonight, that kind of deal. Yeah. But the market's changing. The market is changing all over the place. Like you said, Netflix is no longer the one-stop shop. Uh, television has to to deal with the fact that people are like, no, we don't want ads, and we want to be able to watch whatever we want whenever we want to watch it. So, yeah, I mean, this is that thing. If I sit down at night and I, you know, I fire up the smart TV, and I have six or seven apps along the bottom of my screen, and I go through them to see what I want to watch, and that's kind of become our new habit. You know, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and. Now we don't watch things live, bar strictly at the minute. Um, but it's literally like that kind of thing. If you don't sit down there and do it, and cable television has changed that. But Netflix, I think what what I think that's the big key thing. People are becoming much more aware that the Netflix system is about to change. Some of the, you know, it's that kind of thing of a lot of people are like throwing a lot of shade at Disney, going, Oh, you shouldn't do this, you're just about the money. It's always been about the money. That's what they they were doing it because Netflix were paying them money and they weren't getting up until the point where they weren't getting money for it. It's like, well, you're, you, it's like you got to look at it from a business point of view. If Netflix go to a company and say, well, we'll give you X amount of money so we can stream your show, it won't affect your television money at all. 
they were like, yeah, sure, have it. It's fine. You know, they weren't, it was extra money. But as that started to hit, you know, Disney only announced their numbers, the subscribers of their Disney channels are dropping millions a quarter. They are dropping millions a quarter because more and more people are watching less and less. And they've seen it go up. And I think Netflix is, Netflix are being very smart. I mean, I literally, I'm, I'll be writing an article today that there's a lot of information, a lot of data coming out of Netflix about how they, their originals, all the watch times are going up and their licensed product stuff is going down. Even though things, a lot of shows are licensed in, they are pushing onto it because they can see this coming in and they're getting ready for it. And I think, you know, like now Disney and stuff, they can all the hit on the daredevil and stuff now while they're not live. Yeah. And whether or not, you know, that's smart taking the hit now versus taking it later. Eh, we'll kind of see how it plays out, but yeah, at the end of the day, Disney has to do what they feel is best for themselves. And yes, it is about the money. The, it, it's business. Mm. You know, it's always about the money. Everything is about the money. That doesn't make it right. And I do agree with people that, you know, fragmenting the market like this isn't necessarily a good thing for us as consumers. It's not good for the for the producers either. I would much rather have just one or two locations where everything is and that i don't have to worry about it but yeah that's not the reality everyone wants their own piece of the cookie and they want it to be their cookie not someone else's so yeah but like i said earlier all of these companies netflix comcast cox rogers shaw uh you guys over in the uk they all knew it was coming yeah they've known this was coming for years they've all got plans in place they're all working on whatever those plans are and whether they'll be successful, another matter entirely. But data is king right now mm. in this world. Data is everything. And these companies know it. And they're taking that data and they're massaging it however they need to to, to go, this is how we're going to survive this change. Yeah. This is now Netflix going, like you said, our original content going through the roof, licensed content falling through the floor. We know what those numbers mean. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, it's like that kind of thing. It's like, um, you know, you've got to think NBC, Comcast, Universal, that they are going to start, you know, they make a lot of content. They're going to be looking at this, probably looking at the same thing as well of going, we need to get into this as well. I mean, they've already got little streamers, but at the minute, a lot of the companies have been launching little ones and testing stuff and, you know, putting things on bits and pieces. But, um you know, I can't help but feel like we are going to have another big, you know, they're going to be a big player. I think especially once, you know, they get, if they get forced out of um, Hulu, they're going to want to have their content somewhere. And I mean, I know like here in the UK that once all the Disney stuff and ABC stuff move from Sky and now TV, they're going to have to fill the void with, for their own platform to get that content on there. And, you know, They've been very traditional, but there again, that's a whole other massive network of stuff that they've got to hand, which will remove even more stuff from Netflix. Yeah. I mean, it, this is, it's a chain reaction mm. in essence. And yeah, I don't know how any other way to put it. it it's, it's where the future is going. Mm. And we as consumers have to be ready for that. And we have to say, you know, uh, each of these services, let's just make it easier. Ten dollars a piece. I know that's not the actual price, yeah. but let's say ten dollars a piece. Um, and we're going to have to decide: do we want to give that ten dollars, or let's say we we even budget thirty dollars so we can get three of these? You still have to pick and choose: Netflix, yeah. Disney Plus, Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah. That means there's a whole wall of content out there that you're not seeing because you're not subscribed to those services but also it will also the competition will also tend to make shows better there will be better yes. movies you know we're gonna that's gonna be strong competition so we're gonna start you know it's like we've talked about things like you know the loki show and the star wars show and you know the sister act you know disney can't just go okay here's some scraps from abc that we don't want it's like no we need to put on the best stuff we're going to need to give you the best stuff because you might unsubscribe and go to warner or you might you know they're going to have to keep feeding you stuff yeah <clears throat> disney plus is going to be cheaper than netflix because they've not got the same content but they're going to start creeping it up and going you know <clears throat> they're betting a lot on this you know they've put a lot of money into the streaming service to make sure that they're at the top and i think 
this is where the, the competition is going to make it content better. I mean, I know <clears throat> between like the Marvel and DC, DC have lost me as a viewer um, because <clears throat> A, they've made too many shows, but Marvel got stronger. Marvel TV got stronger, which pulled me away from DC. You know, I wouldn't subscribe to a DC thing now because I don't watch those shows. Years ago, I used to watch all the all the DC shows, but I fell off because it was competition too much, and you can't watch everything. And it was always a thing of I used to have to subscribe to Sky or Now to watch those DC shows. Um, now, yeah, they're there, but I can't watch them because I've got time. But this is going to be the thing: competition has made it better. You know, those. DC shows made Marvel get better TV shows and vice yeah. versa. Especially if you look at, say, the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wasn't uh, pre-Captain America uh, Winter Soldier wasn't the best show, yeah. but it really picked up. Um, and I will say, taking a look at the video game market, you know, we've got on the PC, we have Steam. It has mm -hmm. basically no competition. And you can see, as a consumer, they just don't care. They, they have a very, very poor customer service uh, reputation. They, they've they been kind of going downhill as a service for the last couple of years. They're still a great service, but you can see the cracks forming. And a lot of that is because they don't have competition in the arena right now that forces them to stay on top of their game. It's entirely possible that this new um epic games launcher the yeah. guys who made Fortnite, whatever it is they they, who they also, announced it let's be honest they've also got investment from disney in there as well because i do laugh at this one oh disney and then on the pc market but it's that thing of yeah it's yeah competition competition can make things stronger and the weak will drop off you know it might be like for example cbs are going we can't compete with the other ones. We're not, you know, they need to make stronger Star Wars shows and all the rest of it. Or they go, no, we just need to sign a license crew to get back in with Netflix or Amazon because we'll make more. Because that'll be the other things. The little ones might not necessarily make it. I mean, there was a great article recently about um, some of the lot, the smaller ones now are all signing up smaller deals because they don't want to be locked into massive long contracts with um, things. They all want to have, you know, rather than being like with Crunchyroll, it's like, well, we can be a, our own company. But it's all about that content. You need the most you've got because you can't continue a subscriber base if you don't keep giving new content. And that's going to be the key thing. And, you know, it's all going to be interesting to see where it goes. But, you know, you can see Netflix. Netflix have got the upper hand at the minute because they're the biggest. They're the big boy. Um, and I'll be honest with Amazon Video. Um it's that kind of thing if I subscribed primarily because they had Cloak and Dagger um, for me, but also because I was getting free delivery and stuff, but I'm using Amazon a bit less. I, I could probably dump it. I don't think there's a lot. Every time I go on there, there's very little. The only there's that amazing Miss Menzel series two coming up. I didn't think I've much. Heard of very Jack. good things about it, but I yeah. haven't watched it. Uh, so. The first season was good. Jack Ryan. I've got bored halfway through and I've not carried on. Um, the Top Gear spinoff show. I didn't really. It didn't catch me. You know these subscriber things. You know the, you will flux and flow depending on what's going on and your interests. Disney have got a massive advantage because they've got franchises, they've got brands, they've got characters, whereas Netflix and Amazon are trying to build new ones, which is always harder. That's true, and I, I've got to say for Amazon Prime, I other than The Tick, I don't think I've watched much on Amazon Prime. I did watch some of Jack Ryan, um, uh, and I think I just got distracted by other shows or something like that, but I will continue to be subscribed to Amazon Prime, not for the movies, but because I do use the free shipping. And then I also share the free shipping with my mom and my sisters. So, mm. you know, it's worth it for that for me, you know, because it, it lets you share the shipping with up to like five people or something along those lines. They don't get the video benefits, but they do get the shipping. I so for the family, I think my mom will, yeah, I need to look into that because I think my mum would want, because she uses it all the time. But it's that kind of thing of, um, I always think of Amazon in a different situation because it is so much a month, but the shipping aspect and the Twitch Prime and all the other stuff, you know, if it's like, how much is the actual video thing worth? Because it's probably not worth the full seven ninety nine a month for me if it was without the shipping and stuff. And it kind of, they've got an unweird, they've kind of thrown it in as an advantage of getting you to buy more stuff from Amazon. That seems, so they've got a different, different way to it than Netflix. Right. And yeah, it, 
everything comes with their own mm-hmm. factors. So, and that's just one of them. Yeah, I mean, we used to use Love Film, which was like the movie subscription thing, like Netflix. And I used to use Netflix back in the day as well. They've all gone, and it's just that kind of thing of, you know, the world is changing, and how we're viewing our content is doing it. But I do think Netflix, they are going to start taking a hit, because also this is the other big problem. Like, what if you don't, if you are on Netflix and you are only watching, you know, kids' TVs and you're only watching the movies, and you're suddenly starting to feel like, oh, I'm not getting what I'm after, what I joined this for. I'm watching, you know, like, the Friends and Office are the top two shows or something on Netflix. Um, when they're not there anymore, you know, they're not filling it with a void. And, uh, you know, people like those easy come, easy go sitcoms. Nothing's replacing that, is it? No, because even within Netflix or within uh, Disney, the shows that they're making are. You know, serials, they're, they're meant to be watched episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. And if you skip episode four, you're probably missing a major plot point. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you watch um, The Office or Friends and you decide, oh, no, th- this is an episode. I know this episode. It makes me cringe. I can't really watch this one. I'm going to move on to the next episode. You're not really losing anything by doing that or, mm-hmm. or just going, oh, OK, my favorite episodes are. 13, 20, 50, and 72, and just watching those episodes, you can do it, no problem. But saying, oh, I'm just going to watch Daredevil episode five from season two. It's like, wh- why would you do that? that but they're also, they're, they're not really what I would call like lighthearted TV that you can put on, you know, and just enjoy yeah, background. it. And, yeah. and background, you know, you get up and do the dishes. You're not pausing it because you're going to miss a major plot point. Um, personally, I'm not very good at watching reruns. Um, I don't really watch repeat. I've not, it's that kind of, there's so much content out there. I haven't got time to watch something I've already watched. It's like movies. I very rarely sit down and watch movies again. I might watch them again when they come out. You know, I might watch odd ones here and there at Christmas time and things like that. I mean, we were watching like half of Christmas because it was on TV the other night. Um, But I don't sit there and rewatch shows over and over again, because to me, there's always something new to watch that I haven't seen yet. And, but there's a lot of people that do just, you know, will watch movies over and over and over and over again. And it is very interesting to see what they do. Well, it's very comforting to watch yeah. a movie over and over again. I mean, yeah, okay, you already know everything's going to happen. But sometimes you just want that mind candy. The just, you know, that I know how this is going to play out. I know that everything works out in the end. And I, I just want to see see it happen. I'm kind of in the middle. There are some movies that I will watch multiple times. Uh the first movie I watch every year is the right stuff. Um, the, that's what it's called. It's mm. not a description. Um, it's a comfort movie for me. I, mm. I've been watching it ever since I was a kid. I love that movie. I can recite the entire thing by heart. I don't need to watch it, but it's nice to have it on. Uh, it's nice to have it in my collection. And there are a couple other movies I'll do that with. And I'm thinking before Endgame comes out, Avengers Endgame comes out, yeah. I might watch the entire Marvel series run. Just, yeah. just be like... All right, let's bring this on. We're 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 getting ready for Endgame, but those are the exception. More yeah. often than not, I'm in the same page for you, where I'm just like, no, I, I would rather watch something new rather than watch something I've already seen. I've already seen it. I can recall the parts that I want to recall. I mean, I think that this is going to be the big key thing. I think with Disney Plus of what they bring over. I think the the question about the ABC stuff, whether or not it all goes on. Um, hulu or if they do bring stuff over onto disney plus because i think those comedy aspects things like things like disney have got to be looking at like the reaction to friends this last week of going we need some you know let's try and get some classic sitcoms that we own you know things like you know family uh was it modern family um married with children roseanne things like this you know will that you know those classic old sitcoms that people like put them on there and people will just keep churning through them and just keep watching them. And they're going to be looking at that and going, there's, there could be some value in the, you know, friends is not new, you know, friends, it's hard. I can't believe they've spent a hundred million dollars Netflix on st- non-exclusive streaming rights to show because they, their viewing figures are so high on it. They can't afford to lose it. Yeah. I mean, that blows my mind, especially since I don't even like friends, but you know, uh, I acknowledge that it's a major show. It and Seinfeld were basically the 90s, you yeah. know, as far as television shows went. 
Uh, obviously, there were other ones like Roseanne and stuff, but those were the two big shows. The Office was the big show of the 2000s. It, they would not have spent that money mm. if they didn't think it was worth it to their viewer base. So, mm. yeah, I mean, I, it boggles my mind that a, a show that old is commanding that amount of money. But And also, you have to be thinking of, like, this is the big uh, thing of, like, why Warner Brothers went, they took that deal, was obviously it helps pay for the new system but you think well, that's just friends you know you look at all their content of like disney how much is netflix um paying disney for all of their content and abc is, i mean there are some certain con- um shows like i think agents of shield and Grey's anatomy that are locked into like contracts of like they automatically get them or something it's gonna be there's so many weird contracts out there but you know it's that thing of you know, if Friends is getting this and stuff like that, how much money are they l- potentially trying to lose but want to make up in subscriptions? It's definitely going to be an interesting thing and very interesting watching what's going on with Netflix because they you can see them, they know they've got, and they're talking openly about all the competition and being strong and, you know, forcing, you know, really pushing forward their original content because they know they've got to get that story out there that they are, they are making content for to replace all of the stuff that they're losing. And I think that they're being very, very good about it. Honestly, uh, I think that their viewers also appreciate them being open about it and not being cagey and, you know, using corporate speak. They're just like, Hey, we know we've, we've got to, to do this. And I think that gives people confidence because they can go, Oh, Netflix knows they need to, to up their game and they need to provide quality original content, which you know, doesn't prove that they are actually going to follow through on that because every project is obviously individual. But just knowing that the company is aware of that lets people be confident in it. But it's also, I think, Netflix having in a little bit of slack right recently because they were the they were the company that was saving every old show that was going, and they were picking up every loose scrap of if something got cancelled, they'd sweep in and take it up and try to get the subscribers and hoover them up. Now they're cancelling stuff because if they're not getting enough money or it's costing too much or they're, they're licensing, they don't own the, the big one here is if they, they're not picking up shows that and not just Marvel, there are other shows that they're doing the same thing on that they aren't picking up on. And people are starting to pick up on the fact of they aren't the saviors of television that they once were. And now they are being, they're, they're welding their own acts now on stuff that they don't own the licenses to. Yeah. I've got no comment on it. <laughs> But on that note, guys, that's going to that's the end of that one. Next week's show, the last one for the year, we're going to be talking about what Christmas movies and family movies and stuff we want to see on Disney Plus for next year. Um, so if you have got any, feel free to let us know. But yeah, we're going to that be our last show before, for the end of the year. Um, on that note, subscribe, go check out the website, follow etc. Because you know every little bit helps. Um, and thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, James, where can they find you? I mean, heroiclegacy.com. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon. Laters. Later.